cool that so many of you made it here. Cool. So, try to keep it short and crisp and a bit funny. Uh, so it's the last talk I know. So the next photo is going to be the most embarrassing one. There are a lot of photos in that. But I just flipped through it. That's back in time, 1999. And that on the left side, that's me. And on the right side, that's my co-founder. And actually, I never worked in another company who was always doing my own stuff. So that's 14 years back in time. Um, they were starting off. There was the first press photo actually was taken while we were just doing random stuff, websites and, and so on. And yeah, so that was our first office. So that is actually the place I was born. And it's an old farmhouse nearby Hamburg in Germany. And rarely, I nearly climbed every tree there. So, but that's our team now. So these are my co-founders. Uh, Christian grew older too. And um, he's running the San Francisco office now. On the left side is Matthias. So that's my founding team actually. So what Jimmy basically is doing, like we are creating the easiest way to, to to um, create a website or maintain it, update it, put a shop in there, do whatever you want. So it's really in, in, yeah, an, an online service. You can build everything you want. So we're growing a lot. So like this is the number of pages created with our software. So we're hitting well, we're hitting nine million now. So we're adding three hundred thousand more pages per month, which is quite quite a bit, and quite cool. And. Yeah, so we're a really international team. So we got four offices. Uh, the main office is in Hamburg, so there we are 130 people now there. We got also offices in San Francisco, Tokyo, and Shanghai, and overall we're 160 people now. So just to give you an idea of scaling the company. We're really international, so that means we, we um, offer Jimdu in 12 languages. There's all native speaker. The most of them are located in Hamburg, so like all major languages we're doing. Um, yeah, and so this is our team, <laughs> which is actually a really cool one. Uh, I mean, it's, I just love working there. And what I'm actually pretty proud of that we were building the whole company just with half a million euros. That's in comparison to a lot of startups, less money and, and really. So it's also kind of a lean approach to building a company just as less money and just we stay in full charge of deciding whatever. So there's no, you're not going by spending VC money, it's just our own money we are spending. Um, to just get an idea, we were employing 60 new people last year just with our own revenue. So that's quite a bit and it's working really, really good. So like the main thing I want to talk to you through is pretty much the same as Spoiler, Spoiler is talking about. Like, how you grow rapidly a company and stay fast with that. Otherwise, not trap in this thing with slow enterprise, slow moving, all these processes and stuff. So really keep lean, keep fast. And so that's our story, how we do that. So we call it the magic wheel, where we try to get out the magic. It's, it's not that magic, but the first, like for, for us, it's like three segments that are really important to scale the company. And the first one I want to talk about is like the culture of the company. So basically, I see the culture is the, the culture is like the foundation. Um, I think it's just because you're standing under the speaker. If you just move over to the oh. it'll probably be better. Okay, thanks. Or to the other side. Either direction. No, yeah. no, maybe it's not in the. Uh. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it's working, huh? Um, so. <coughs> Like the culture is like the main foundation. That's the people you're working together with every day, and that's really, really mo the most important thing. And like you can't, I'm pretty aware of that you can't influence a, um, a culture directly how people are working together, but you can create a good frame set for things that are happening there and for people that they can de develop there. And you, you, that, if you, 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 you can't control it, but you can do cool stuff in order to make it happen to keep on having a good culture or even develop it a bit further. So um, these are like some photos which might give you an idea how the culture is at Jimdo. So what we, for example, did is like we rented the house next to the old farmhouse house, which is 100 kilometers away from Hamburg. And every any team can go there anytime. So we bought a caravan. You can just keep hip. Um, hit the road, eight people, and, and just work there, basically, for however or how long you want. 
and so it's nearly booked out all the time. A lot of people are using it, and you get you are so focused there because like there's nothing around <laughs> on the countryside, and um, yeah, you get really things done. So we often go there, and actually it's like I, I I'm also there quite quite a bit, like spending time there with the teams. Um, so the way Jim is set up. I, you heard it several times probably today, it's like we are cross-functional teams um, in a size like five to eight people. Um, we try to, so every, every team got a vision, same as you. So they're falling, for, for example, like one is building new features for Jimnu, one is the best shopping experience, one is taking care of Russia or other markets. So we try to stuff the teams that way that they can ful ful fulfill their vision. And, and go there and head there, and there are no obstacles in that, so you get all the power. So I'm trying to empower them as much as possible, and that made us able to scale the company like this. So setting up new teams was not that big challenge if you got a structure like this. And they're also dealing like, they, when, we're, we're, when you're doing vacation or whatever, so they all figure out this kind of stuff in the teams, and that's something like their home, I would call. So thing about Jimdo is a bunch of small startups, and these are together 160 people. Well, the home is the, the team and you're working in. Yeah, so <laughs> that's Magda. Um, actually, he's just a person is taking care of all the people. So it's, it's easier to explain what she's not doing. She's, she, she's not producing any part of our product. Um, <laughs> You can see that. <laughs> no, but um, she's, she's just there yeah, to collect feedback, to, um, to be there, to, to, um, to, I don't know, see what's going good or not, how to improve things, taking care of the culture, creating events, doing like random, stu random stuff which ever helps to address certain issues that people are really having. And so in a growing company, there are more and more things going probably wrong also. So but there's a person you can speak to and she's, she's really like always in a good mood and she's collecting that. So it helps a lot actually. Um, yeah, we do party stuff. We had it seen earlier about everybody's doing party stuff. That's actually on the boat in Hamburg. Um, it's cool for like foreign people to come there and have a boat ride. But um, we do sporty stuff. So we do running events. People learn to paraglide. They, we also go to, to museums, to theaters or different stuff. And by creating like different events, you always get the chance that different people mix up. And that's fairly cool because like, it's spending time with trust. So trust in a team, trust between different people. This is one of the stuff I was telling you but you can't influence culture directly, but with this kind of stuff you can just create events and maybe things are happening. Right, so <laughs> just fairly new, like it's also we hired a chef, it's a good friend of mine, Sam, and he's cooking every day. And you know that like, the mood of um, people on a ship is pretty much connected to good food. And I would say it's pretty much the same in a company. But there's another big value I see in that. So you're seeing the, like he's doing the sausages there. I heard there are good sausages here in Boston. Um, but like, like this flame, um, I'm more think about having a kitchen is pretty much like having a campfire inside your company. And the campfire is a place you would gather around, you meet different people, you're switching, and you get to know all the people a bit better. You come close together, and that's kind of event you're having there every day. And that's cool, because like, there are over 20 nationalities in our company. And so by having this kind of place, you, m you make it easy to meet every day. <coughs> so now I hand over to <laughs> the next part. Yeah. So this is um, the next part of our magic scaling wheel is communication. And um, as Friedel, as Friedel mentioned, um, Jimdo is uh, growing very rapidly. So you see that from the beginning, the company is growing um, 50 to 100 percent in headcount every year. That is quite a bit. And um, of course, this creates a lot of, let's call it, challenges. And usually, what would a normal company do when they grow with this um, uh, speed. speed? So usually what they would do is, let's have project <laughs> managers, right? <laughs> <laughs> let's have a lot of reporting, because the management needs to know what's going on. Let's have detailed planning, so we make sure everything's going right. Let's have budgets, and of course, let's have departments. Yeah. Right? 
agree um, on all of them. And that, that's kind of the normal stuff that's evolving over and over and over again. And we know all the companies, they are doing this. And they're doing this for a reason. Because they have to deal with the growth. Right? But Jimdo decided um, that is not our way to go. We understand that there might be some value in all this stuff, but we don't want to do this because it doesn't fit our company culture. And now the question, of course, is if we don't have all this stuff, how do we deal with these challenges? And here are three uh, formats we came up with I want to introduce to you. The first one is called Teamverlötung. Uh, it's a strange word in English, but it's also a strange word in German. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nobody understands it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. to make it even weird for you. <laughs> <laughs> now we... <laughs> So, uh, literally translated means team soldering, um, but it's more like one guy in San Francisco told me you should call it team hacking. So that means all teams come together. Okay? And this format is every, uh, run every week on a Monday afternoon. And what you see here is uh, all the guys and girls from the Hamburg office, it's like 100 to 120, sitting and standing uh, at the fifth floor at the Jimdo office. And at least one founder, uh, here it's two, it's Fridjof and Matze, uh, facilitating this meeting. And the purpose is, after this meeting, everyone in the company should know what's going on, where are the problems, uh, what's new in the company, what do we have to deal with. So at the beginning, they're presenting the numbers, like new sign-ups, um, new sales, new, sales um, new hires. Then usually um, Magda, the feel-good manager, is presenting some kind of stuff. Here's a new guy. Uh, say hello to him, we're announcing some kind of sports event or open bar or whatever. And then there's a round robin mechanism for three teams that are presenting each time about what have been we been doing, what are we planning, what are the obstacles, where do we need help. Um, and I think it's pretty close to what David Anderson likes to talk about and he calls operations reviews, although we don't call it this. Um, but I think it's close because it saves the same purpose to uh, coordinate all the teams company-wide. And um, this meeting is very short. Usually it takes uh, 45 to 60 minutes, not longer. Um, so imagine there are over 100 people sitting there. You don't want this meeting to last for two or three hours. <laughs> so, and then there's another thing. Uh, I can remember like nine months ago, I had a conversation with Fridjof and he said, you know what, Arne, when we started this company a couple of years ago in the farmhouse, it was really cool. We were a couple of friends, you knowing each other, we were sitting in one room, we were getting stuff through the door, and it was really cool. Everybody was knowing what's going on and it was really fast. But now, as we are growing and growing, I feel that things are changing. So it feels differently and I don't like it. What can we do about this? So we had a couple of conversations and then I remembered this really smart guy <laughs> and this book. He's called Stephen Bungy. He wrote a book, The Art of Action, and I really, really recommend reading this book. Um, he's a strategy consultant, and um, he, one of his to topics is alignment. So he likes to talk about alignment. How can we align um, people and teams on a larger scale? And he says, one huge problem almost every company has is there's a lot of activity going on, but very little action. That means that people are fully utilized, they're doing stuff all the time, they're working overtime, but um, there's no coordination, they're not moving in the same direction. And if people are busy but doing different things, the outcome might be very poor. So, and he says, what we want to have is Alignment, and as we learned before at, uh, from the Spotify talk, uh, alignment and autonomy uh, match quite well. So, so there's no contradiction, but uh, we need alignment. And every employee should ask his manager one really simple question. And that question is called the Spice Girls question. Um, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> And that, would that, is on that, that is really important. Um, and I uh, introduced Fridjof to this concept <laughs> and I asked him to answer the Spice Girls question. And how did it feel? Yeah, it was relatively complicated because if I, before you were setting all those teams, finding all the missions for all the teams like spread in the world. But there was somehow also I wanted 
just go in one direction. And so I have to pick for myself like the most important thing, which is actually quite hard for you as a founder because you got all these ideas and you want to push them all out of the, out of the door. But I, I saw the point. So yeah, it was it was, it was really really quite hard. It's a simple concept, but it's really hard for a manager, and it's a good exercise to do. So we did this, and the founders came up with a single most important thing, and we called this goal number one. And we commun communicated this goal number one to everyone in the company and made clear this trumps everything. <coughs> okay? There's one big thing that trumps everything. And then on your regular basis, we will have this goal number one meeting. Here you see one of this. It takes place in the kitchen because um, <laughs> the kitchen is kind of the, the melting pot of the company. People come by very randomly and that's what we want to do. We want to have this meeting transparent. And every team is sending at least one delegate to this meeting. Uh, usually I facilitate this meeting and then the goal number one team uh, reports what's going on, what are our improvements, where are we struggling, where do we need help and every other team is supposed to offer help. So and what we found out is that first um, we thought that this, the goal number one is a pure tech thing but it is not because like the press uh, team, the online marketing team and the partner teams, they all had a lot of contri uh, to contribute to this topic. And we were really amazed. So in order to achieve this goal number one, we needed a lot of collaboration. And this is a good format for um, synchronizing teams. And the second thing we found out is uh, people became aware again, like in the beginning, how much power this company has if everyone is moving in the same direction. So the, the spirit was changing. People were going out of this meeting saying, that was really cool, now I feel uh, how amazing this new thing is we're going to build and if we all collaborate we can really do it, so give me a high five. It was mm -hmm. like this. Okay, and then um, the third format is related to this. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came to Jimdo for the first time like two and a half years ago, I walked through the office and then I th saw this, it's called the idea wall. And I asked Fridjof, what is it? And he told me, we have a lot of smart people working for Jimdo. So I want to use their ideas and their creativity. So we have this wall painted with magnetic paint and everyone who has an idea is supposed to put this idea on the wall. Makes sense, right? Now, the problem was that usually the wall looks like this or even more crowded. <laughs> so a it lot of rhythm. ideas, people put a lot of uh, tickets on this wall, but some of the stuff never got done because it didn't match the business strategy. And this, of course, led to a lot of frustration because people think, I have an idea, Fridjof told me he would use the idea, but no, he's not going to do this. So um, after a while, uh, we shut down this wall because we decided it is better not to have one than to have one but not to use it. Um, but still, we thought, hmm, let's um, go one step further. So what we're doing now uh, for a couple of months is called Open Prioritization Meeting. And we started with one team, that's the feature team. It's called Captain Feature, actually. And they are building the CMS. That's really the heart of the Jimdo system. And they're not only building features for end users, they're also building features for other teams, like internal customers. Right? Mm -hmm. So the problem was that uh, as Jimdo grew and grew, there were more and more teams that had requests for this uh, feature team. So they had a huge uh, buffer called backlog and some of the stuff never got done because it, it became reprioritized all the time. And again, this led to a lot of frustration. Uh, and this is a huge problem. And at the same time, this big queue uh, creates pressure on the team that is working on the request because they, you know, they're a really nice guy and they want to uh, satisfy all the teams but they cannot because it's too much demand. So what we're doing now is this format and this is really, really cool. <laughs> you see Friedrich here, he's um, facilitating this. It uh, takes place every second week and um, at the beginning, um, oh no, okay. So everyone in the company is invited to join this meeting. That's the reason why it's called Open. Now, <laughs> <laughs> on a um, Wednesday afternoon, people walk into the office of the CMS team and they have their requests with them as tickets. 
And at the beginning of the me uh, meeting, they have like one minute to pitch their idea and to explain to the other teams and to Friedhof why this is a good idea and what's the business value of this. And then um, Friedhof, together with the team, decides what the team will do during the next two weeks and what they won't. And if they don't do stuff, they reject it and return it to the requester immediately. Okay? And um, there's a lot of implications with this. The first thing is the team needs to know their capability. Because they need to know, can we accept two or three or four new tickets? And all the tickets we cannot um, accept will be rejected. Or they won't be rejected, but Friedhoff will tell them, it's a good idea, but I'm sorry, at the moment it doesn't fit our strategy. Please come back in two or three or six months. And sometimes he said, I'm sorry, we won't do this. It's not our main focus. Or sometimes he said, uh, we already did this. Mm. And to be clear, this is not a prioritization meeting. Um, in the scrum sense. It's not a backlog grooming meeting. Um, it's really a stakeholder meeting and this team does not have a backlog. There's zero backlog for this team. Yeah. Okay. So people, other teams can come for one hour every two weeks, then they have a temporary backlog for one hour, then it's closed again. No backlog, no queues. So we got rid of a lot of problems like the pressure for the team, the frustration for all the requesters, um, all the overhead for managing the queues, you know all the stuff. Mm. Okay. So, so, to be really honest, like pretty much all of you were facing the problem, but like it was more, before it was more likely to have a culture, yeah, create me a ticket for that, we will get it done, we put it on our backlog, but the truth is like quite a bit of them would never get done. So, but by me facilitating the meeting, I step back and actually I connect the people that are having the idea to the people that are able to solve the things. So you get some emotional connection between these guys and you, we can see, okay, we are doing that and you and everybody is allowed to explain why we should do that and there's some coaching also in there because everybody has to see the business value in their ideas and by everybody speaking up and pitching their ideas, it's, it's quite easy to put them in order. And actually normally a, a product owner is going to do that and satisfy all these uh, customers for Actually, it's never that way, or I haven't seen it, that everybody is satisfied with these uh, this ideas. But by having all the people in one room and speaking all, all loud out what's going to happen and why it's the business value, you can put them in order and everybody agrees on that and everybody is in good mood afterwards and uh, like, leaves the room with a smiling in the face. And that's like make a huge difference to the company and all. So and we are rolling it out no, now to every dev team because like in a growing company, stakeholder management was a huge problem. And so it solved really a lot of things. I think it's somehow related to our culture in the company, but it's a good thing you can do. And, and even, even more, like I would say 30 to 40% of the tickets um, you can solve right away because like we have done that before, the wrong team, um, there's a tool for that or that or that. So by having all these people in the room, you get so many knowledge there so you can solve things immediately. And that's, that's really cool. How do the other offices participate? Sorry? Okay, yeah. Well, yeah we're, we're going to talk this a little bit later. Oh, I, we can talk about this now because uh, that's one of our messages. We are on the journey like right now. Some things are really cool but we're still improving and one of the next steps is definitely yeah. keeping other locations in the loop because at the moment it's limited to Hamburg. Right, well, it's not such a big deal because all the development is here and so they got a re representative, <laughs> they send in there, then they're in San Francisco, Tokyo or Shanghai. So that's how we deal it today. Yeah. Okay, and I think this open prioritization meeting is also like an education program for the employees because now they understand why Friedhof and the other founders make this de decision and this de decision. And before this, it was just rejected, but I don't know why. Yeah. And so it, it wasn't transparent at all. And so that's the connection also to Kanban, like making things transparent. And so this, this format is connected to that, yeah. So what we really did here, um, replacing all the stuff I was talking about at the beginning, what you usually do when you grow uh, with communication. Like the team verlötung, the open prioritization meeting and the goal number one meeting is structured communication with very clear interfaces and I think this solves a lot of problems you usually solve with all this stuff um, uh, we know very well. Okay. Can we take this question at the end please? Yeah. Thanks. So this is uh, the third 
um, segment of our metric scaling wheel. It's called Kaizen. And you might have wondered why we did not take about, uh, talk about Kanban so far, because this is a Kanban conference. And for us, Kanban is really cool. We love Kanban. And of course, you have a lot of Kanban boards in the company, and it's not restricted to the dev teams. Every team is having a Kanban wall. There are a lot of very sh uh, shallow implementations. There are some deep implementations, and we are improving this. Um, and I have some examples. Here's the Captain Feature team with colored lanes, which is quite cool, I think. You have the infrastructure teams. Uh, of course, the board looks different. Um, we have the multi Um <laughs> It's really hard to understand what they're actually doing, but it's really important. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really important. <laughs> and I know, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then we have the A team. Um, that's here. You see uh, Nadia, who is sitting there, and <laughs> Magda. And their mission is to um, equip other teams for their mission. So they are internal coaching and team, and they are doing retrospectives. They are doing feedback. They are doing workshops, uh, facilitating uh, improvement things, uh, having one-on-ones, all this stuff. And um, here we have another board that doesn't really look like a Kanban board. It looks more like a checklist. It's from the country managers, but still it serves the purpose. And if it helps the team, we're fine. So it doesn't have to look like an uh, out-of-the-book Kanban board. And here is uh, the one we took, the picture we took this week or last week. It's um, the San Francisco office with Fritjof in front of it. And again, it looks different. And of course, Sam, the chef, has his own uh, board. <laughs> so every, <laughs> every employee has an avatar and he puts it on the meal he wants to eat. And so uh, there's transparency about how many dishes uh, Sam needs to prepare. And actually, it solved a real problem because like, he's doing the, the, um, the dishes a la minute. So it's like really in the time you're ordering. And so by putting on, on the avatars on that, he was able to, clo to queue four or five and doing like four dishes in a row. So and it really it got a lot faster. Actually, if we would measure the lead time, it would be <laughs> 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 yeah. and, right. and so the message here is about the Kanban part. Um, Kanban for us is really a tool, a very cool tool. We love this. But we don't want to achieve uh, to be the best Kanban company in the world. We want to achieve a Kaizen culture, continuous improvement. And Kanban is a great tool for this. Um, but we're not really sticking to the techniques. We're trying to implement the principles and the values. And sometimes it doesn't look like Kanban. But for example, the open prioritization meeting, this was very effective queue management, what we're doing there. And it also means we are balancing demand against um, capability for this team. And we're expanding this to other teams. So, and they're not having equipment at the moment, but still we're doing this. Um, another example would be the goal number one team, which is, uh, or the goal number one concept, which means we're limiting the number of strategic goals to one, company-wide. Okay, that's kind of whip limit. And a uh, third example, uh, you saw the wall with all the teams, um, which are uh, independent and cross-functional, and that means uh, the founders empower them to do whatever is necessary to reach their goal. And this removes a lot of overhead for the founders. And it also means uh, we have more power, man, more cre cre sorry, creativity out of the teams. So, and all the formats evolved. So we didn't plan them up front. All the formats solve real problems we're having, and we're still evolving them. So in one year from now, they will definitely look different. OK, so we talked about the three uh, segments, like culture, communication, and Kaizen. But Friedhoff, you're the founder of Jimdo, one of them. And you're like the CEO, the senior, most senior manager. Why didn't we talk about management? So don't you have management at Jimdo? Hmm. I guess we have. <laughs> but it's hidden. It's somehow different. So let's get back to the slides and the formats we were uh, explaining. So let's see the sprints. What we're doing there is basically like I'm spending five days with one team and actually I work on a vision for them. So you also can do that with workshops in Hamburg or in a city you're operating. We're actually be there five days, shaping the vision, speak out all the ideas, gather them, and, and spend time together with all the people. It's like building really trust. And you all together, like you can agree 
on that vision you're creating there because you did it together for five days. And that's somehow, I would say, management, but in my way, but it's, it's, it's a different way, but um, <laughs> like a shared midterm version, alignment and building trust, it's all in there. So let's see a different format, like the team for loading. Um, so basically you're giving all the teams a stage to speak up and show what they're doing. You do it pretty much the same as, 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 as Spotify and it's, it's funny to see like all these companies come up with, diff with similar formats to the same problems. So like giving a stage means like you give them like motivation. You, they can show off what they did. So you synchronize. They're, you see the, um, the obstacles that are, are there and tracking progress and alignment. So but, um, making all the strengths moments is like the thing you have to do in order that other t people can take on leadership. Only when they know the problems, they can help to solve all this. So communication is like a b basic pillar there. Everybody can move to the right topics and get the obstacles away. So it's a lot of management in there too, but for me it doesn't feel like real management, but that's fine. Um, so goal number one, we would like explain a lot. So company wide strategy, um, like before it was really somehow a management problem to address the right teams and say to them all, please do that for this team, do this, do that and that. So you, will, you have to do a lot of management. And by setting up goal number one, there was a clear vision where we're heading and it, was, it became like the infrastructure team, for example, like had two people dedicated to, to this team because like this is the main purpose, we should go there. That's, that's the thing we have to do. So like, I think it's better, it, you could also write what I don't have to do with management then. So that it's just less work. Like the open prior meeting, we explained a lot. So what is stakeholder management in a growing company is becoming a problem. You all know that. Focus on business value, like the coaching. Um, you get more uh, effective uh, alignment, sure. And you have a format. And actually, I think it helps, again, to shape the culture of the company because everybody can speak up. And uh, like, it's really like their success if like this thing was created they were fighting for. And that's, that's a really good thing. Um, last one, like cross-functional teams is also like a thing where you better could write what you not have to do anymore. So I'm not, if you're doing, want to do holidays or whatever, yeah, I don't care. Just figure out with your team. Or, or you want to get a great hire, just go for it. I help. So there's a coaching team helping this, this, all these teams to get better with that. But actually, like they're in charge of doing this and they, like when they achieve their vision, all are, are cheering them because they did it. So, yeah, and you don't have to, <laughs> I, I personally don't have to think about resource allocation. So that's like, they did it on their own. And that's also connected to the open prior meeting because then if they're uh, having a bottleneck again and again every two weeks and you're seeing us maybe front end uh, connected, on a development connected, you can say, hey, I'm going to see this is always the bottleneck. Maybe you should think about get this bottleneck away and hire somebody. So you can just ask questions in order to get the teams better. So relatively easy, but it's the same thing you're doing with management normally. So I think there's more, wa uh, more ways than just one to run a company. And What's really important to me is like choose a path that's fitting to your company culture and be courageous to do things differently. Thank you.